I can never be depressed if I never slow down. Speed is extremely important. Speed defies gravity. How, do, how does a plane fly through the air and defy gravity? Speed. It's moving too fast to fall. If you're always attacking life, if you're always doing things, if you're always making more money, if you're always traveling the world, doing this, doing that, new car, here, there, new podcast, me and James English, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> you know, if you're always doing things all the time, unhappiness can't catch you. Do you think you could slip if you stopped? I don't think I would because of how my mind works, but I also know that speed is a, is a fantastic way to be happy all the time. I'm always, forward. I'm always looking forward to something. I wake up every day excited. I'll go do this today. I'll go do this today. I'll go do this today. And I very much live my life in a frame of, no, I, I have to do this. It's very much a, I get to do this. There's another thing that a lot of people make a mistake with when I talk to them, like, oh, I have to go to work today. Change your language. I get to go to work today. Imagine you had no job. It'd be worse, right? Because otherwise you wouldn't be working. So you get to go to work. Oh, I have to fix the car. At least you have a car. You get to fix your car. Most people don't got one. I have to go get the kids. You get to go get the kids because you have these beautiful children who love you. You understand? People's, even their own language is wrong. It, the world is, can be framed. Maybe I'm completely crazy. Maybe I'm full of shit, like you said. Maybe I am. But the frames I've installed in my mind are all beneficial to me. So if that makes me crazy and full of shit, good. <laughs> because I can't become depressed. So you can sit there and tell me I'm full of shit while you're depressed and I'm happy. And I would never want to adopt the thinking of a depressed person. So if you're depressed and tell me I'm full of shit, I don't want to think like you anyway. You know, let me tell you guys every something about life. And I, this is some genuine life advice. Winning in and of itself never, ever gets old. Like yeah. being the guy who just endlessly wins, people think, oh, but there must be something he ain't happy about or he, yeah. he can't be that happy. I promise. When your life just goes well all the time and you're big and strong and rich and you do whatever you want and you steal everyone's wife and you mm -hmm. sit around with your brother laughing about it and smoking $500 cigars in your mansion, flying around on private jets and just doing whatever you want. I promise it never gets old. Ever. It never gets old because Ever. everyone else loses, right? People are like, oh, well, no bad things happen to you because you're a misogynist. You think, I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, okay. So, so, I don't care. Like I do backflips into my pool. That's what I do, either in my in my house in Cannes or my house in Bucharest or my house in Dubai. Nothing changes. I'm just I'm doing backflips. My life's good. People don't understand. Everything's good in my life all of the time. The biggest psyop, and this is going to be a bit angry. Biggest psyop that the wealthy elites and the people who win at life ever committed mm -hmm. was to convince you that money doesn't buy happiness. If money doesn't buy happiness. Why do rich people never give their money? Money is like water, right? It won't make you happy in and of itself, but if you go without it for very long, you're going to start really wanting. You're still going to really still want it. You're going to start really wanting a drink. So the point is that if you go without money, it's all you think of. Money is an important part of life. Mm. And don't let people who are hyper successful in every sphere, don't let people like me and Tristan who are in fantastic physical shape, fantastic financial shape, with good brotherhood, with a good network, living a fantastic life don't sit there and look at us and go there must be something they don't like instead go their life is perfect and i want that because the second one will motivate you the first one allows you to cope and make excuses to yep. not try you have to try harder or you're never going to win if you're the person who wakes up does work is fantastic at it and then takes three days off you're going to lose they say that hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. That is completely true. You have to be consistent. You have to decide. Are you the kind of person who wants to make a lot of money in this life and live a life of freedom? Or are you the kind of person who wants to look back when he's 30 on his 20s or 40 on his 30s and look at that decade and go, what did I do with that decade? Well, I didn't get rich. I didn't travel the world and live like they do and take confidential. What did I do? Well, I had a day off here a day off there, a bunch of nothing days that amalgamate into this decade of nothingness, and you're just wasting your time. If you want to win, you need to be consistent. You don't need to be the smartest, not at all, but you have to be the guy who's there day after day. And I guarantee you, I will guarantee you right now, IQ has nothing to do with how successful you'll be as a What is going to determine how successful you're going to be is, are you there every single day? Are you doing what you're supposed to do day after day? I can also apply this to sales. I knew guys 
who were terrible. Back in my day, sales used to have to call companies. I was smooth, I was the best. We had some other guys who were smooth. They'd land a deal, go buy a nice car, whatever, take a few days off, take it easy. We had people who were terrible. And when I say terrible, I mean they had a thick Indian accent, didn't speak English that well, didn't know the script that well, didn't know the answers, but they were always in the top 20% of the company because they just hammered the phone. They just were on it. They needed to feed their family in Bangladesh. They didn't give a fuck. They were just calling. That's it, day after day. When you're on lunch break, he's on the phone. You can win with hard work alone. And that's what's amazing about the universe when I say that. God will give you anything you truly want. If you truly want money and you truly try hard, you truly listen to us, you are gonna have as much money as you could possibly ever desire. But if you think you want money, but you kind of want something else, or if you're arrogant, or if you're lazy, you're gonna end up somewhere in the middle if you're lucky and talented. And if you're not talented, you're not. So you don't wanna be a normal dude, because when you're a normal dude, you're a loser. You don't get to do amazing things. What's interesting is none of you have had a normal life. You've had a unique and individual life path. The things you've gone through Nobody else on the planet has gone through. You've lived certain experiences, the school you went to, the time you were picked on in that class, the girl who broke your heart. Every single thing you've been through is unique, like a fingerprint, a completely unique life. Somehow you've managed to stay completely non-unique. Every man understands you shouldn't be complaining about things you cannot change. You have to play the cards you dealt. To be born a certain height and then to sit there and go, what do I do? I'll tell you what you do. You become the best version of yourself, just like everyone else does. Nothing about the height is in and of itself enough value for me to be a valuable man. As a man, you build your value. You are born with the cards you're dealt. Sure, it'd be ideal. Look, I'd love to be seven foot tall. I'm not. So it's the same argument. If you're five foot two, you need to become rich, strong, and funny, and charismatic, and interesting, and witty. If you're six foot four, you need to become rich, strong, well-connected. It's the same game. So to sit there and complain about it is asinine. All of you have a handful of lessons. I don't think you understand that. You could have been in a car crash at four years old and lost your legs. If you have any understanding of how lucky you have been, this is pure luck. There's no reason, this only luck has kept you fully able body sitting there capable of learning and listening and becoming something. You don't really need to be that tall if you're important and rich. And when you walk in the room, you think when fucking Mayweather walks in the room, people give a shit? Fix that frame in your mind. You are viewing yourself as a short man. Stop it. Walk the fuck up and be the man. Who's teaching you to be a man? If you're fortunate enough to have a fantastic father, great. But if you don't, there are very little lessons and there's basically no guidance out there explaining to you the self-accountability which is required to be a man. Everything we were just saying to you earlier about making the choice of being invisible or being highly important and paying the rent for one of those two choices, that's based around absolute and utter brutal self-accountability. You must accept the decision you wanna make and you must accept that everything is your fault, everything is on your shoulders, regardless of what God throws at you. Give you an example, me and you were in jail. Did we still have bills to pay? Did we still have mouths to feed? Absolutely. We did, did we still have a business to run? We're locked in a Romanian jail cell with no access to the outside world. And we still had responsibilities yep. and we were still absolutely and utterly accountable for those. We didn't sit and say, well, I'm in jail, so they don't matter. Let they, them take care of it. No, they do matter. We're men and they must be handled. And we found a way to handle it regardless. Even though we believe we shouldn't have been in jail, even though it was unfair, even though it was a matrix attack, we still took absolute and utter self-accountability for the situation and all of our problems. We never skipped a beat. We never missed a single payment. We never let anyone starve. We handled absolutely everything from a jail cell. And you have to sit here and understand, most of you are in absolute freedom, not meeting your responsibilities. How are you going to meet your responsibilities if you become important enough to be locked in a jail? How are you going to meet your responsibilities when you're heartbroken? How are you going to meet your responsibilities if you lose all your money? And we're not talking just about our immediate family in, in a selfish way. I'm talking about my employees. I have over 300 plus employees, security guards, security guards who rely on their salary that they get from our company to feed their families. And that's their job. It's not their fault. I was locked in jail. I'm the man who hired them. I have a responsibility to make sure everyone's salaries are paid to make sure everyone's family is fine. Um, you know, there, there's a massive triangle, a massive pyramid built underneath men like us uh, of people who, uh, who people of people who need to eat and people who do us a service and people who need their money in exchange. I couldn't just say, you know what? I'm in jail. They'll understand. Well, what would I expect these people to do? 
You know, this is their job. They work for me. And it's my responsibility to make sure everyone's getting their paycheck, even if I'm locked away, which is scary because how would you how would you accomplish the same thing? Imagine you have three months, you have 45 minutes on the phone three times a week. That's all you get for three months. Would you be able to make sure that everybody you care about and everybody who depends on you and all the people who depend on you from a business perspective, all the people who work with you, work for you, are fed, provided for, getting their salary, getting their paycheck? Could you do that? If not, keep working. Absolutely. Because we pulled it off. Absolutely. Just, just about. Just about, my friend. <laughs> we got it done. And we're preparing ourselves for anything else that might happen in the future to make sure we can always get it done.